Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm, oh, what am I doing? I do this every weekend now, every week. Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at a new custom fixed blade. We have uh, some interesting kni uh, knives in knife life news. Uh, but first, we have a very special guest. Tonight on this very show, good evening, North Code. Great to have you here. I hope you're ready for the giveaway. I hope you're ready for the Gentleman Junkie giveaway tonight. Um, on this very same show tonight, we have Doug Ritter of Knife Rights, who will be joining us, not just of Knife Rights, of, yes, that's right, the knife we all know and love, plus uh, several others. He's going to be joining us. We're going to talk about the Ultimate Steel, the annual fundraiser uh, for um, Knife Rights. Doug, how's, how's it going, sir? Hey, Rob. It's going good. Hey, it's great to have you here. And it's great to have you here, Quack. Yeah, I messed up again. I know. It's like uh, uh, we've been doing a lot of recording recently, so I can't help but fly into the Knife Junkie podcast uh, open. Hey, Dave, great to have you here, sir. So as you know, uh, Doug Ritter has been fighting for our rights for years and years with knife rights, getting, uh, getting laws changed, antiquated laws, some of them from just after the Civil War, getting those stupid laws changed and updated and changing minds in a, in a very um, uh, cross the aisle kind of way, which is a, a nice thing in these, these days. Hey, Michael, great to have you here. He says, hello, Mr. Ritter. Hello. <laughs> That's your father, right, Mr. Ritter? Yeah, my father, my <laughs> grandfather. It's just, yeah, I'm getting to the age hey, where Brian. Miss, Mr. Ritter is becoming more common, but it still, it still <laughs> sounds weird to my age. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's funny. My father is uh, just sent me a text. This is a funny uh, generational story. My father sent me a text saying, I'm going to send you a newspaper clipping of... And uh, he lives in Ohio, and uh, he just in their local um, in their local newspaper there was an article about you and knife rights and the changing. Oh, really? Yeah, changing law in Ohio, and they and they also talk about uh, Rick Hinderer. It's it's an article that I think I read, you know, kind of a couple months back when it was actually happening uh, initially, and. I just thought it was really cool that it's in his local newspaper. I also thought it was cool that my dad is still cutting out clippings from the newspaper to send to me. Like, well, uh, I think he's cool. It's cool. He's playing atten paying attention to uh, playing attention, paying attention to to what we're doing with knife rights. I mean, that's that's very cool. You know, we just yesterday or this morning we had our first hearing for our next bill in Ohio, which is a preemption bill, knife law preemption. And we also had our Michigan preemption bill voted out of their house. Um, so big step there. Uh, now it goes to the Senate. So uh, even with all those, the issues we face, we're getting stuff done. Describe what, a, what, what, the, um, what that bill means, a preemption so, bill. So what preemption does is it means that, um, that state law preempts all local law. So you get rid of, you mm -hmm. cross the city line and now your knife that was legal on the other side of the line is illegal. All those not knife laws, local knife laws go away and state law is supreme. Um, that ensures consistency of enforcement. It means that people within a, a state only need to know the state law. They don't mm -hmm. need to know the local laws, which are almost impossible to, to know as you travel through a state. Um, it's an important part. We passed the first knife law preemption bill in Arizona in 2010, and I think we're up to 12 or 13 states now. Nice. Well, we have a viewer from Ireland, uh, Stephen. He goes as Patty's Potato Peelers. He wants to know if you can come do your work in the UK next. What do you think? I, I get asked that a lot. Uh, <laughs> can I come to the UK? Can I come to Canada? Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are pretty full here in the U.S. And and the fact of the matter is hey, uh, our political system, uh, for all its warts and, and problems, uh, lends itself to what we're doing. And their political systems don't so easily lend themselves. You know, we got we have 50 states. We have 50 opportunities to make mm -hmm. things better on a much smaller scale than than the national scale that you see Uh problems with in, in these other countries. But uh, I have offered uh, people in Canada and people in Europe and elsewhere uh, to provide whatever insight I can. But uh, 
it's a it's a big job so far a lot of people have talked about it but nobody's taken up the challenge quite yet right right hey andrew good to have you here i have that little damascus blade you sent me um i think it's from pakistan but i will i'll look further into it and i'll be sending that back to you shortly quack great to have you here sir uh, glad to be living in arizona because of your efforts doug Thank you. I'm glad to be living in Arizona, too. We have uh, really good laws for knives, firearms, and pretty much anything involving the Second Amendment. So it's a great place to live if you don't mind uh, like 115 degree temperatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've had you've had records out there this week. Yeah, it's dry. It's a dry heat. <laughs> right, right. So I'll take 115 and dry over 90 and 90 percent humidity any day. But yeah, uh, different strokes. I mean, if you want to know what it's like, go set your oven up and stick your head in. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, we have uh, out here where Jim and I are, we have we have the 90 degree, 90 percent humidity. That's that's a, we live kind of in a swamp here. Um, Don't like that. That's that's probably why they call it the swamp. Uh, so uh, but uh, so what states are coming up next for for you and knife rights? Well, uh, so. The majority of legislation gets done in the first four months of the year. Mm. Um, and we were successful in stopping a really bad bill in Texas. Um, we were uh, frustrated in our attempt to uh, further roll back Texas knife laws. Uh, very frustrating. But, you know, it happens. We'll be back. Uh, in Texas, it's every two years. So we'll be back in two years to continue those efforts that we started in 2013. Um, we've got our bill in Ohio, we've got our bill in Michigan. Um, that's really all that's left right now. Uh, we are already working on next year. And, uh, as a matter of policy, we don't talk about where we're going next mm -hmm. year. Um, but I can assure you, um, we'll be in eight to 12 States next year, just like we were every year, basically, since we started with our state efforts in 2010. Uh, well, I'm sure I speak for all of us here that we we thank you and we applaud your efforts. And we're also very interested in in helping uh, your efforts because this this I doesn't this, this doesn't come for free. And when we just met at Blade Show in person for the first time, it was awesome to shake your hand and stand there across a case of beautiful knives to talk to you about this stuff. You were, uh, we were, that case of knives were, they were all donated by makers and manufacturers and, uh, and collectors for what? The Ultimate Steel. It is our annual fundraiser, over $100,000 worth of knives, firearms, and African safari jewelry hmm. um, that folks can win by just making a donation to Knife Rights. And um, at Various levels. Uh, at a hundred dollars, you get a free SOG knife. At two hundred dollars, you get a free Spider Co. At three hundred dollars, you get a free We knife. Uh, knife. At five hundred dollars, you get a really nice cold steel. Uh, the 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 thousand dollar contributions who get a uh, really cool Damascus and and carbon fiber hoe are already gone. <laughs> uh, thankfully, that's a good thing. Yeah, because uh, that generates a good deal of money. But it it's a wonderful opportunity to win knives from some of the best makers out there. Uh, we've got knives valued up to eighty five hundred dollars. So these are these are really good knives. Um, and one of the unique things about the Ultimate Steel is its winner's choice. So we draw the, the winners and the first person drawn gets their pick at everything in the drawing. It's not just, well, this is the grand prize. You win it, whether you want it or not, you get to pick. Yeah. And then the second person gets to pick everything left over after the first person picked and on down the line. Uh, and for those who donate before the end of June, we also have the early bird bonus. And that's uh, a bunch of production and, uh, limited edition knives, values up to $1,000. Uh, we've got sets of K-Bar knives. We've got uh, SOGs. We've got uh, all kinds of knives and gear, um, sharpening gear, um, stuff to service your firearms, um, just a little bit of everything. I urge everyone 
who's listening to go to ultimatesteel.org or, or go to kniferights.org and click on the ultimate steel. And I think you will be amazed at the prizes we have and that you could win. And and we're adding prizes almost every day on it. They're coming in. So there was a nice little heretic out the front tanto with a high polished blade that I was like, uh, I, I kept kind of staring at uh, if you saw me <laughs> glancing away from you while we were talking. I mean, just lots of really, uh, really cool, unique stuff. It seems like so many people had already donated knives to that. You know, uh, I saw I saw, you know, a smattering of pretty much everything the the viewers of the show love. So well, one, of, one of the great things about the ultimate steel is we get such a variety. You know, if you're into tactical knives, we got some really nice tactical knives. If you're into traditional knives, we've got some beautiful slip joints. Yeah. Um, if you're into fixed blades, we have fixed blades, daggers, bowie knives, um, you name it, as well as a really nice assortment of firearms. Uh, that African safari, we've got some jewelry coming in. Um, we've got some really neat, we've got a uh, 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 father and son set from Jerry Hoss. Hoffman. We've got um, uh, the Brens uh, oh, yeah. doing our husband and wife set for us. Uh, it, we're, we've got some really cool stuff that isn't even there yet that's coming in late. I mean, we came home from Blade Show with about uh, $10,000, $15,000 worth of knives and commitments for probably another ten or 15000 That's the only way I travel. That's the only way I go. <laughs> I got to have at least $15,000 worth. I saw Jerry Hassam and his son Alex's table. Yeah, Alex. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, the, the, his son is making knives that are, got to say, you know, there, challenging his dads. There, there's something in the genes there you, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I know I know you have to go for dinner, but before you we let you go, sir, uh, the the beginning portion of this show is our pocket check, and it's a chance for us all to show off and talk about what we're carrying. And uh, I always I always start it off, um, and then I'm going to ask you, and then people flood us with what they're carrying. So uh, I'll keep it brief. But today I was carrying a classic. My um, I had my Chris Reeve knives, Sabenza 21 with the black micarta inlays that started off as gray. And this uh, this knife I dropped on its tip as I do with all of my favorite knives. And, <laughs> and, and our good friend, Jared Neve, I, I sent it to him and he hand sharpened it, put a, a mirror edge on it and took care of that tip for me. So um, today I was, uh, I was just thinking, I kind of, I don't want to say I neglect this knife, but I look past it towards some of my flashier options and uh, oftentimes leave that in the case. So today I was carrying that and just absolutely loving it and remembering what a, just what an awesome knife it is. And then uh, you were talking about we before I had a Civivi on me uh, in my waistband, holding up my, my, my jeans, my big jeans. I had this uh, acting as a wedge today, the Civivi Asticus. I love this knife and I love the name. It just, every time it brings out the 12 year old boy in me, Asticus, uh, a great <laughs> knife. This was a gift from my brother-in-law and uh, he always gets me a knife for Christmas. And this one was so on point. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So that, both hollow ground and both drop points. Well, I guess this is technically a, a clip point. Uh, if you if you really look at it, it looks a bit like a clip point starting so, from. Uh, so interestingly, the very first good knife I ever owned was a Chris Reeves Sabenza. Um, back in the day, I got friendly with the Reeves and uh, their knives were a little bit out of my range. Uh, I saved up my lunch money <laughs> for a year and a half and then had uh, Chris do a special equip to survive engraved Sabenza, which I think was, he said, was like the second or third custom engraving they'd ever done. Um, and I still have it. Oh, nice. It's, uh, it's still a favorite. And you can see the 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 blade, the, the Sabenza blade design influence in my own knives. Um, it's, they're, they're an incredible company, still producing incredible knives and just great people. And um, uh, one of the the earliest supporters of knife rights, I'm proud to say. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was yep. it was cool too. Hey, Andrew, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that super sticker. Uh, you're a gentleman and a scholar, and we greatly appreciate it here. Um, 
I had a chance to uh, shake Tim Reeves' hand and check out the 31s. Man, what a smooth knife that is. Oh, man, lovely. So, uh, uh, Doug, what are you carrying today? What's your what's your well, knife of choice today? So let's show off something new, um, pretty new. So, so this is my RSK Mark V. And this was originally produced by CRKT back in the day, and eventually it 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 ran its length, its life. And uh, Blue Ridge Knives uh, came to me and said, "We'd like to produce it again." Hmm. And I said, "Great." <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's being produced in the same factory um, by the same people that produced the original one. Um, comes with a nice little sheath and designed to fit in an Altoid stick. Or you can carry it as a neck knife. Um, it comes with this tin. Uh, cool. So with with instructions, which I don't have here, on how to take the tin and the knife and put together your own pocket tin survival kit. Um, so uh, I'm cool. excited that it's available again. People seem very excited. Uh, it's got a retail price of under fifteen dollars, uh, MSRP of under fifteen dollars. Nice, inexpensive. Um, uh, this one is, uh, you can maybe see the marks on it from where I cut down a, a three inch sapling with it. Um, <laughs> it, it, it really is a practical knife that'll, that, that's small and compact, but usable. I mean, that's the whole point of having a knife in a survival kit is to actually have something you can use. Right. So, right. So, so that's my choice of, 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 uh, uh, Doug Ritter knife to show off this evening. Well, I love the uh, I love that it comes in the tin. I love the whole idea of an Altoids tin or a tin survival kit. We had Kiefer who said the only good knife is a Ritter Hogue, which I like. Well, I mean, thank he's, you. he's taking a real stand. I love that. And then we've had two other folks say, well, many others say, thank you for coming on. We had North Code say that, and thanks for all you do, Mister Ritter. I think I think that feeling well, is pretty universal. I I appreciate it, and I I just want to say that um, that. I can't do what I do, no matter how much passion I have, without the support of people like you and others who uh, moral support, but most importantly, donate in the ultimate steel and, and otherwise. Because, you know, even though Sue and I don't take any salary, uh, you know, we have to pay lobbyists, we have to pay our director of legislative affairs, who's our chief lobbyist. Um, our travel expenses are crazy. Um, we often only get a 24 hour notice of a hearing. And as you can imagine, yeah. a ticket to some capital city in that's not uncommon for that to be a thousand dollars bought the day before you need to leave. So, um, we need to raise a good deal of money. We need to raise significant funds. And, uh, I hope that your listeners will donate to the ultimate steel and help us continue to forge a sharper future for all Americans. I love it. And that would have been a great place to end and, and to send you on your way. But I have one more thing to say because uh, someone just commented and said, I love, or I want the Ritter Hogue uh, fixed blade. And we were just talking about that before we started rolling. Um, so I know you, you don't, you, they keep moving. So you don't have one to show off right now, but talk about I it for just a quick gave, sec. I, I literally gave, my last fixed blade, my last RSK Mark III to uh, one of our volunteers. Well, I shouldn't say give. He did pay for it. But it was <laughs> my last one at Blade Show. We've, we've got some more coming. And um, uh, the the response to the fixed blade has been great. Um, it's uh, S30, S45VN. It is a really, really good knife. And I'm, I'm pleased with the job that Hogu is doing just beyond measure. They are producing such a high quality knife. I couldn't ask for better partners. Um, and obviously from the notes and, and, and comments, people are appreciating the quality of knife that they're putting out for. Them. Oh man. Yeah. I would say second to none. Uh, Mr. Ritter, how about practice? It's practical, not tactical for hesitant states. <laughs> well, you know, if, if you look at our logo, it's besides saying a sharper future, it also says essential tools and essential rights. And, you know, these are tools primarily. 
Um, 99.9% .9 of the time they're used as tools. And uh, one of the reasons that we get such support from bipartisan support across the aisle is because this is criminal justice reform for people because people carry tools and they shouldn't be arrested just because of the type of tool, the way it opens, the length it is, or what shape the blade is. Um, and that's the reason we've accomplished what we've accomplished. 33 bills repealing knife bans in 23 states and over 150 cities and towns since 2010. Right on. Well, uh, Doug, have a wonderful dinner. Bon appetito, sir. I'll, I'll send you on your merry way. But uh, thank you. Thank I you love very it. much for having me on. My pleasure. I love that you dropped in, and and I'd love uh you know we'd love updates. So happy to do it. Uh, now that I figured out how to get this all to work, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, again, folks, please donate in the ultimate steal. We need your support. Alrighty, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there he goes, Mr. Doug Ritter. Uh, we're lucky to have him. Uh, no doubt we are lucky to have him and lucky to have knife rights. And uh, could never imagine a day without a knife in my pocket, says Kiefer. And luckily, because of Doug Ritter, you don't have to imagine that because uh, you know how crazy things can get and how people can jump on bad bandwagons and, and, and get whipped up into a lather. Well, you know, Knife Rights is there to kind of rein everybody back in and remind people uh, that, you know, it's the first tool we ever had. And so you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I shouldn't say shooting. That's a whole lot. You're stabbing yourself in the foot if you get rid of them. All right. So uh, I wanted to move on and thank some patrons. Thank all the patrons. I'm going to read off a list of, of all of our patrons. And then we're going to give away the uh, the Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway. And then, and then we'll start the conversation on uh, why are knives trending smaller? Is it the skinny jeans? Uh, and then um, I got a couple of knives to show you. You know, you know, it's Thursday night, so it's Thursday night knives. But first, I want to thank all of the patrons uh, in our Patreon group. I really, really appreciate your, your, um, your, well, your help. I, it, it, it helps greatly. And I had a, um, our very first patron, Brent Smith, I had a chance to meet uh, at at uh, Blade Show, and he himself is now making knives, and uh, he was carrying one of them, and it was so beautiful. So uh, I just want to jump on and say say thank you. So we have Shane Miller. He's our brand new, uh, yesterday I believe he joined us, brand new gentleman junkie. So he is uh, eligible to win the uh, tonight's knife, which is the Off-Grid Knives Rapid Fire Coyote. Uh, off-grid knives just knocking it out of the park i got i got some new ones here yesterday and um i'll i'll show i'll show them off in dribs and drabs a um, couple on this one and a couple on the next uh show i don't want to i don't want to make you all jealous uh we have shane miller we have sean curry we have ryan northcote he he uh, was just commenting og1 kenobi great name and uh, chris wolf we have joseph strycharts Ben Belkin, you know him as Jack Wolf, Jack Wolf Knives. We have, hey, Monster, great to have you here. Jason Edwards, Martin Gamboa, John Ladner, Kurt Cromco, Ezekiel Yates, and his dad, Jonathan. Mr. Faledo, we have Jesse Tellis, Mike Latham, our, our good friend over there at CollectorKnives.net. We have Joe the Knife Whisperer, Edwin Callow, who gave me recommendations for some awesome cigars. Ryan Leitner, Caleb Townsend, uh, who came away from Blade Show, uh, a a uh, a winner, let's put it that way. Reed Merritt's Kevin Seastrom. We have Jock from Across the Shock. We have Timothy Becker, page turn, I think, here. And, uh, and I know we have Brent Smith. And uh, have we missed anyone? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Brent Smith. We have Where is Kristoff and Brent Smith. So thank you, guys. Thank you, one and all. It's so greatly greatly appreciated. And uh, it, it makes me proud. Also, Fred Lynn. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention Fred Lynn and Jason Knight also uh, with us here. Jason Knight, you know Jason Knight, the man who makes the beautiful forged kukris. And of course, we also have that fellow there. So thank you guys. Thank you, all of you. It's very appreciated. Now I'm going to stop saying that over and over again. But uh, I, I'm always I'm always amazed when someone would trade money 
for my yammering. So I just, you know, I appreciate it. All right. So gentlemen, junkie knife giveaway. First, we'll start by showing off the knife in this beautiful box. Now, uh, something I've learned about, about off-grid knives is not only do they produce some very robust and serious knives, but they package them very in a, such a great way. And we all know how valuable packaging is. We all know that we just like to see how someone cares about their knives enough to package them like this. So you get a pamphlet with uh, knives and care instructions and such, and you get a sticker and you get this nice foam inset. I love that. But here's the knife. This is really what you want to win right here. This is the rapid fire coyote. It's a knife that's reminiscent of the ZT 300 series, or it reminds me of my zero 200, not so much in profile and looks, but kind of in robust nature. It's, it's a, it's a big knife and it's got uh, G 10 with these little uh, uh, hexagonal scallops in it for gription. And then it's got that killer recurve blade. I'm a, I'm a sucker for the uh, recurve, you know that. And, and I love that style of drop point you know, that has a top arch. Uh, think uh, Charles Marlowe, think uh, Walter Brend. Um, and then it it's on a, it's got an assisted open that is, I mean, it fires. If, if you have not been working out, it will shake the fat on your arm. Let me put it this way. You could give it to your third grade uh, homeroom teacher, give it to her. She would open it up and uh, her, her, both arms would be shaken. You remember that, that teacher who had that, that, that that tricep that kind of dangled and uh well she would love this thing this knife um uh was donated to us by dave you know dave this old sword blade reviews he's a very been very generous uh with this channel he's given us a number of knives i think to date seven maybe eight and it's so greatly appreciated one of them actually ended up in my in my case, I'm fostering it. I will send it out into the world eventually. But uh, Dave, thank you so much for for not only the support and the the comments and the humor and and all of that, but also these awesome knives you keep sending us. It's so greatly appreciated. Uh, this is new in box, and uh, this is cryogenically heated D2 steel. All right, so let's let's get that wheel of destiny up, and uh, we're gonna spin it. And uh, one lucky gentleman junkie is going to receive this in the mail. Uh, hopefully, I can send it out tomorrow. If not, you might have to wait just a titch. All right, let's uh, let's do this. Let's roll it or spin it. I should say. There it goes. There it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Uh, Oh, Martin, you almost got it. But this goes to John Ladner. John Ladner, you have won. You have won the Gentleman Junkie giveaway for June. And this rapid fire by Off Grid Knives, the rapid fire coyote, is now yours. I will stop pawing it at long last. I've Not that I've been pawing it off camera, <laughs> but like um, no Jeffrey Tubin. So I'm going to put this in right in the box. And I'm going to send this off to you. I really intend to send it off tomorrow. Um, John Ladner, you are the winner of this month. That's June 2021. Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. Congratulations, sir. I never win anything, he says. Well, you do now. Welcome, Bob. Oh, oh, you're welcome, Bob. I got you. I was like, welcome. <laughs> You've been here. Kiefer, uh, I could donate a Dolica. <laughs> hey, man, we'll throw that in the package. You know, Dolica is a knife. Congratulations, John, says Michael. Congratulations, John Ladner, says Monster. Congrats, John. Congrats, John. Look at this, man. We have such a supportive community. I love it. All right, everybody. Let me know what you're carrying today. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, we found out what I had. This here. Beautiful, beautiful thing. This is five years old now, uh, made on February 29th, 2016, a leap day knife. That means it only has a birthday every four years. Unique knife. So I had that. Love it. What are you guys carrying? Coming up this weekend on Sunday, 
we have Zach Wingard of Wingard Wearables. This is one of his wares right here. He is a really interesting guy. You have to check out this podcast. And actually, I find his videos, uh, he's got a few videos on YouTube, maybe 10 at this point. I find them fascinating. He's got a lot of knowledge about um, ancient warfare and and uh, and also the weaponry and warfare of, of early America and the Native Americans. Uh, especially, he's especially interested in the Northeast um, Northeast woodland, you know, the people living in New England and the Iroquois nation, basically, and their weapons and their use of tomahawks and such. And he creates, uh, he and his wife have a company called Wingard Wearables, and they create these interesting ergonomic weapons um, tools also. Uh, EDC um, tomahawks and such uh, built and meant to be carried on you in your waistband. Yes, that's right. A tomahawk in your waistband. It It's an interesting, interesting experience. I can only do it uh, honestly with, uh, with sweatpants and kind of my looser garments, uh, shorts and stuff like that. Um, maybe it's the skinny jeans. Uh, Boker Chuck Cadreda's pocket smash it. Yes, sir. I started your, I started that video at work today and then the boss walked by and I had to turn it off. But uh, I, since the moment I saw it, very interested in the pocket smatch it. I am a smatch it lover. Yeah, I came out and I said it. I'm a smatch it lover. And to take one and turn it into something uh, pocketable, how cool. And Chuck Adritis, man, he knows what he's doing. CQC 11K Craftsman Multi Tool Milwaukee Fastback. The uh, CQC 11K Cool Knife, that's the, that's the one that looks kind of like a Skinner, right? Uh, I think. Great, great knife. Off-grid black stallion. Scott, nice choice. Nice choice. I love that knife. Uh, uh, for for a minute there, I, I thought I was going to sell it, and then I, th I thought better of it. I'm like, it was one of those desperate moments where you're like, God, I just spent so much money. I need to get rid of something. And I grabbed that. And uh, But I'm I'm actually going to cultivate my, my collection of off-grid knives. It's pronounced Dalika. You Philistine. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time I was called a Philistine. Dolica. What did I say? Dolica? Such a rube. Uh, Brian Ocasio, how you doing, sir? A Harns Wind in Yellow G10. Okay. So uh, we were talking about Dave before. He just gave us a Harns Harvest. And uh, that's the first Harns I've ever had. And I just had it on the table. I think I put it back. Um, and I am shocked at the quality of that knife. I cannot believe. It's a $40 knife. I cannot believe how dialed in and, and beautifully um, made and engineered that thing is. It's awesome. Microtech DOC. DOC. Hey, Shane. How you doing, sir? Uh, uh, DOC is... Oh, Death on Contact? Is that what that is? Is that the one that he did that they did with um, Strider? DOC death on contact. If that is, I love it. ZT 0450 CF. Nice with ZDP. Dalika. Someone remind me, uh, Brian, please remind me of the, of the provenance of the Dalika. Is that, tell me about that. Uh, Cause now I'm, Oh, Oh, an aristocrat, the spider coast sleesh Bowie. I saw your picture of that today. Uh, beautiful, beautiful knife. Yours is an older one, isn't it? It's, it's got the, um, it's got the polish, the mirror polish, or doesn't it have a polished blade and, and a non-blue handle, like a gray raw titanium handle? Uh, but also, Brian, let me know the, uh, about the Dalika again or 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 uh, or whomever. Just let me know about that, where it comes from. I mean, I know it's like a, a, a is that, it's, I know it's like a counterfeit, but let me know the story behind that. Professor EDC. Uh, been carrying the BK40 for the last month for review. That's the new Becker clip point folder. I love the the look of that thing. I don't have that uh, knife, but I really like the look of it. And I know it's got a real nice chunky handle to hold. Civivi Backlash and Tucson TS221. Like I always say with the Tucson, I know I love it. I just have no idea which one it is because the the numbers I just can't get. The 8020 in Magna Cut. Quack. That's right. I forgot he made a couple of 8020s in Magna Cut. How sweet is that? Uh, we're going to be talking uh, with um, 
with Laren Thomas again sometime soon. I can't remember. It might be early July or late June, um, which we're pretty much in late June. So I guess it's early July. Uh, I can't remember uh, with the with the calendar, but we're going to talk all about Magna Cut. I bumped into him at at uh, Andrew Demko's table at Blade Show, and uh, just a cool guy, cool guy. And I remember um, when I interviewed him first time, I was so intimidated because he's so smart, and he started talking about steel, and I started sweating like I was in math class. Um, but uh, I really look forward to talking to him about developing Magna Cut. Hey guys, over there at Shredder Knife Reviews. Hey y'all, pocket check. The new off-grid Enforcer XL is a beast. What's that you say? I love this thing. And uh, I dare say it is reverse tanto, uh, but I'm just going to call it a worn cliff, a bellied worn cliff. Uh, I, I agree. I think this thing is awesome. It is huge, too. Uh, one, two, three, four solid inches of D2. Really, really awesome. You guys, uh, you guys are aficionados of the off-grid knives. I know. Have you checked out the new Grizzly, the Chef's Camp knife? It's awesome. I think you have. I think I've seen a video of it actually. Large modified feldspar, and oh, I like the feldspar and the Kershaw Culpepper. A fine choice. My Culpepper now lives upstairs in the in my dresser, but I love that knife. A single bladed Barlow um, by by Kershaw. Those, I, I suspect the other two in that series are just as awesome. That's a great knife. Tucson TS 124 and the usual Victorinox Tinker. That's one thing we know about Monster. He's always got his Tinker. But Tucson TS 124, again, I'm sure it's awesome, man, because I've tried out four uh, from Jared and they were all awesome. Gareth Bull, nice. The Mura. Okay, so the Mura is, I think, a beautiful, beautiful knife. And it reminds me of another knife. Uh, but a Mura is a fighting bull from Spain. And I only know that because there used to be a Lamborghini back when I was 12. And I thought when I was 25, I'd be owning Lamborghinis. I really studied up on it. And there is an old one, uh, an old Lamborghini called the Mura. A beautiful car. Just like that Gareth Bull is a beautiful knife. Uh, but named the Mura. Pena Custom Slip Joint. Small clip point trapper in antique paper micarta. Oof. Shadow configuration, no bolsters. Hey, Benjamin. Benjamin. I never call you Benjamin. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Uh, of course, we see the Jack Wolf logo there. That logo, that very sticker right there, rides on the back of my car proudly. And uh, I'm sure people are like, ooh, what's that cool wolf? So they'll find out soon enough, won't they, sir? Uh, G-Man has the CQC-13, a nice choice, and the TRM Neutron 2, awesome and awesome. But, you know, the CQC-13 made it into my top 12 most good-looking folders, at least in my collection, uh, video that came, uh, podcast that came out yesterday. And I agree. I mean, I agree with myself, obviously. I think the CQC-13, man, mm -hmm. is one of the most pretty, um, uh, clip point shapes out there, period. Shane had a Microtech uh, DOC in LMAX. Nice, LMAX. So Shane, uh, th that is death on contact, right? It's not like doctor, like I'm going to take care of you with this knife. John Evans, how you doing, John? Uh, you had the Spyderco smock with micarta sharp dress knife scales. Man, they make nice scales, uh, the sharp dress knives. I just... Um, who did I just see who had a really nice hinderer scale? I have a hinderer scale by them, but but this was a different, this, something about this was different and really pretty. And now I can't remember exactly what it was, but Spyderco Smock, I like what they did with the, uh, with the compression lock on that. And I like the blade. I'm not sure about the handle. I've never actually held one. It looks like a little awkward to me though. I must be totally honest. Uh, but I love that blade on the smock. Carrying the DLT ODG PM2 and the micarta feldspar, I fixed the lock stick on. Oh, very nice. How'd you fix the fix the lock stick? Presumably not just uh, sharpie or pencil. How'd you do that? How'd you fix fix the lock fix the lock stick? And what is ODG? Uh, 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 olive drab green. Olive drab green? Nah, probably not. I don't know. ODG PM2. I daydreamed of carrying an R a, a, a uh, REC Shaman. So that's uh, Razor's Edge, Razor Edge, 
What's REC? River's Edge Cutlery Shaman. What's that look like? Oh, 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 okay. It's a version of the Shaman or Shaman. Shaman? Um, the, exclusive to River's Edge Cutlery, right? Uh, Sean, how you doing, Sean? Morris, uh, Mora Knife Eldris. Uh, that's kind of a, a regular for you, isn't it, Sean? What color? Let's find out what color this Eldris is that you that you frequently mention. I'm going to guess that it's green. I'm going to guess that it's green. Blade Ogre, Chris, how you doing? Benchmade, Mini Crooked River, and the Emerson Sheepdog Bowie. Whoa, so you're double bowieing today. That's kind of like breaking a rule, but, you know, different, different locks, different brands, uh, different, so much about them are different. I think we'll let you slide with the double, with the double Bowie, double clip point today. Um, but I know you have a thing for the clip points. So, you know, you might not have had a choice. Michael says counterfeit is putting it nicely. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Uh, North Coat is packing a Capara, such a cool looking knife. Never had one of those and a Delica in ZDP 189. So that's got the green handle, right? With the and you can see the, you can see the um, the the line delineating the two different steels. Mm -mm -mm. Kane got a couple of South Africans in pocket today: a Trevor Burger Atlas and a Steen Camp Dogleg Slip Joint in crosscut micarta, nice and Lightning Strike carbon fiber bolsters. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Steen Camp, I know I've heard the name, but I can't picture this knife. Uh, I know what a dog leg looks like. And Trevor Berger Atlas. Man, you're riding high on the hog today, Kane. I like it. I like it. Uh, Monster had, did Bob really just say reverse tanto? <laughs> I did. I did. I was wondering who was going to jump on me first for it. I mean, you know, God, man, sometimes, well, I looked at it like this and I was like, okay. I mean, I see what they mean, but it's just sloppy. It's a sloppy shortcut to call something like this a reverse tanto. But I did say it. <laughs> Just trying to make sure you guys are paying attention. That's all. Kyan GR17, greetings, sir, presumably. C uh, congrats to the winner. That was John Ladner. Um, carrying an old Benchmade Mini Reflex 2 today. Haven't made up my mind which slip joint for secondary. Cheers. That's awesome. I love that. You know, you're standing there. And you're like, oh, no, because... Mm. You know, uh, uh, mm. so the mini reflex, I'm trying to remember what the reflex was, but I love carrying older knives and this isn't nearly, you know, by much of a stretch, my oldest, but I realized today that this is five years old and, and a couple of months. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that's good discipline, Bob. You still have some, you know, still carrying those old knives. Deacon skiff drifter. Nice. Uh, for past two weeks, your interview with them helped lead me to their work. Oh, well, I'm that that makes me happy. Um, someday I'll I'll get one, too. You know, that's uh, those are beautiful knives. And whew, man, I like I like their uh, their work. Yes. Strider death on contact. I really like their. Um, well, their. Um, uh the way father and son work together, they had an interesting uh, interplay. Uh, uh, ben, got to run, fellas. Spending time with my daughter this evening. Catch you next Thursday. Hey, man, that's the most valuable thing you can be doing with your time. So have a, a wonderful time with your daughter, and uh, we'll see you next week, Ben. I'd like to hear about your uh, experience at the gathering. Gathering? Yeah, out there uh, in, Esca not in Escanaba, you know, for the GEC. Uh, all right. Take care, sir. Scott says he has the avocado. Oh, the avocado shaman is River's Edge Cutlery. Oh, man. That sounds nice. Steve, how's it going, man? Good to have you here. New for 2021. I'm carrying the Kaiser Slicer Knife today, designed by Michael Galovic. Oh, oh is that like, like Gavco? I'm thinking Gavic. I'm sorry. Michael Galovic. The Kaiser Slicer. So that's the, oh, that's the gentleman who recently passed away. Is that right? The Slicer, it looks a bit like a, uh, it looks, uh, it's very, very thin and it looks a bit like a scalpel. Is, am I thinking of the right guy? Jesus. If I'm not, uh, sorry, don't, don't mean to say anything bad. Waterfall Micarta GEC number 86 oiled field jack. Woo. Hey, Mike, how's it going, sir? Mike from Collector Knives, Waterfall Micarta. 
GEC 86 oil field jack waterfall micarta. What is that? Is that like some beautiful sort of blue or blue green? Do tell, sir. And is it canvas or or linen? Dave, other carry today was my BJ Hill Custom Microtech SOCOM Elite Auto. BJ doing awesome work with Coca Bolo inlays, raw stone wash handle, and custom hollow rigor. Oh, damn, that sounds awesome, man. That sounds awesome. Custom Elite SOCOM Elite Auto. So, is this a uh, Dave? Is this a Tanto or is this a um, clip point? Curious. I, I that sounds awesome. James, great to have you here as always, sir. Today he's carrying his Ozark Trail 5335 multi tool pocket knife. That sounds awesome. Ozark Trail just knocking it out of the park with their high value uh, knives. And uh, I got, let's see. Yeah. The, so the Ozark Trails, I got a really nice slip joint from them um, eh, maybe about a year ago or maybe a little bit more. And it had some, some stagalon, you know, stagalon handles. So like fake stag that looked pretty convincing, but the blades, man, it was a, um, a stockman configuration, if I'm remembering correctly. And I gave it to a, a good friend of mine at work, a cameraman, and uh, he loved that knife. He is no longer with us, unfortunately, may he rest in peace, but he loved that knife. And you're mentioning uh, Ozark Trail just reminded me of him. So thank you, James. I appreciate it. Clip point on the SOCOM Ooh, with a regrind. And I was imagining that regrind being hollow. Is that right? Wugga Wugga 82. Good to have you here, sir. Uh, hello. I'll got my Microtech Scarab 2 in the mail. Nicely. It's the Blade Show Shadow fully blacked out version. I have, uh, oh, just over there, I have the magazine from Blade Show that has that on the cover. And uh, the Scarab, it's so cool. And it's got those little gutters or those little fullers on the blade, right? So that so that when you're doing underwater demolitions or underwater welding, if you will, uh, and you open it up, it, it, it comes in and out easier and it drains out the water when you come out of the water. I think that's a cool, cool little uh, detail. Monster, unfortunately, I have to go. Got to pick up my son at his friends. Have a great night, everyone. Monster, as always, man, thank you for joining us. And uh, I love hearing all of our people taking care of their kids. Uh, there's a funny Chris Rock joke where he talks about fathers being like, well, I take care of my kids. And he's like, well, you're supposed to. <laughs> I think that's funny. But anyway, be safe, monster, uh, driving uh, with the precious cargo. And have a good night. We'll see you here next week. Mike, uh, was Rendezvous model. Looks a bit bleached. Linen micarta, but with a coarse fiber. Ooh. So the kind of linen you might paint on. That sounds That sounds nice. Bleached. So mm, I, I'm picturing it. I'm, I'm picturing something that was once like a deep indigo, but it sat in the sun and uh, kind of in the center and, and at the at the peak of its contour, it's like lighter, but around the edges and the corners, it's darker. And in my mind, it's beautiful. So, uh, yes, tonight's topic. Why are and actually, Mike Latham, you might be a good person to uh, to help us out on this topic. Why are knives trending smaller? And then, of course, I posit, is it the skinny jeans? You know, because they have little little short pockets and they're so tight, you can't put something thick in that pocket. You know, you're not putting the Enforcer XL in skinny jean pockets. That's for sure, man. It's too long. It's too thick. You know, and uh, nothing long and thick goes in those skinny jeans. So not this that's for dang sure monster said have a great night everyone starting to drive so can't say goodbye to everyone just know see everyone say goodbye all righty sir you be safe take care and no racing all right like comment subscribe like like hey how's it going sir what's up i thought i'd pop in <laughs> it's good to see you i had a few minutes so i thought i'd jump in and i saw you you gave away the coyote yes here it is we have Carrie with us, Carrie of Off Grid Knives. I have all my off grids arrayed around me. Nice. Oh my goodness gracious! So uh, I'll have you know, I'm 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 uh, I'm going to be traveling soon, and we yeah. go to this spot, and I usually take my uh, my kitchen knives with me um, yeah. because where we're going, you know, has atrocious knives for cooking. None of those are coming with me. This. This is the knife that's coming because, uh, <laughs> yes, because, uh, you know, if 
if I have to kill a bear on the side of the road and skin it, I got this. If I need to You're cut good. onions, look at this. Look at how thin this is, people. Yeah. This thing is beautiful. Something long and thick goes in my skinny jeans. Oh, sorry. Slicey. I knew someone was going to jump on that. Jump on it. Take it back. Um, Carrie, thank you, man, uh, for designing these gorgeous, gorgeous knives and sending them my way. This thing is awesome. No problem. Yeah, I, I wanted to do something a little different with the whole chef chef knife world. And, little, you know, uh, as you know, everything is a little overbuilt in the off-grid line. And so I wanted to do an overbuilt chef knife. So do they exist? I don't know. I figured I'd throw one out there and see people like it. So they do yeah. now. And I and I think uh, people do. Uh, Mark, I think that was Mark Herrera saying he loves his sea dog. Yeah. Love nice. my off-grid. Oh, off-grid Viper. Um, Viper. Nice. And, and this is what I was playing with all day long. Oh, man. I just got something on it. This is this is the coolest blade shape. Yes. That is the coolest cool. blade shape. This is the Cayman EDC. Yeah, I got it right here. The um, the silk too. Yeah, so I always I love the Bowie blade. Always have, and so instead of going the typical route of, you know, a fixed blade Bowie, why not do a, a kind of a modified flipper and make it, you know, make it look cool. <laughs> yeah, it's so severe. I love its severity, yeah. and and you know, um, you talk about wait, see, uh, what's the model of the chef's knife? It's called the Grizzly the grizzly so there's two versions yeah, you got a stone wash and like a, a like a black black stone wash type like a black wash so scott yeah. n says love my black stallion he was uh when we were doing a pocket check earlier that's what he was carrying today oh and, nice uh, yeah um awesome i love my rhino says north code uh ryan oh. north code and it's funny because um after our interview my dad was like, I really like the cut of his jib. I want to get you a knife. And he ended up, he got me the backcountry blackout. That's what I asked for. And he said, nice. what should I get your brother? And I told him the rhino. And and so on that, Chris, this was last Christmas. On that Christmas, yep. I, I got a wordless text from my brother where he's just like this, you know, <laughs> showing <laughs> yes. off his. So, uh, yeah, man. So this actually looks kind of like a Cayman, by the way. Like the snout, exactly. it kind of has like the, you know, they have that short, sharp looking snout. Exactly. And I, and I put a little write up on the website, basically where I came up with the idea because um, I traveled a lot to Central America and I would see them all over the place. Cause I'd always be in the ocean. I surf and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, wherever you surf in Central America, it's always near river mouths. And when you're near a river mouth, that's where they live. And so they would sometimes cruise out into the lineup they, they, they disguise themselves as like logs. Oh, you yeah. don't, you're not really sure what it is. <laughs> Murder so you're, logs. <laughs> so you're always, you know, looking around. It's, you know, but uh, yeah. So the idea was just a Bowie slash came in. It just hit me. That's awesome, man. I love it. And uh, not for nothing, but we were also talking about the Enforcer earlier. Enforcer yes. XL. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. Yeah. So what, what kept happening was people said, I want the blade bigger, bigger. Everyone kept saying bigger. And it's funny because I think your theme tonight is the opposite, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's a curious question because I'm probably one of those people who said bigger, make it bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. And you were one of those. And so I was like, okay, fine. You want to you go big? Let's go big. And so... Uh, I made it, you know, tactical grip, so it's super grippy, deep carry, and then I put a giant, you know, glass breaker on there. Yeah. And then for you, I did a clip point. That's that's for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know what? Um, uh, an interesting thing about the texture on the uh, on the enforcer, it's instead of like. Um, Let's see. How do I put this? It's it's instead of negative space, it's positive space. You have like peaks coming out, right. you know, instead yes. of they're like little diamonds almost. Yeah. Little and pyramids. They, and they come up out of the uh, out of the um, out of the surface. And, and I really right. like that. It's like a positive grip. Love the Bowie blade on that knife, says Chris. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, and this, I and had something. I had something new. I wanted to show you. So, so Ooh, I yeah. went smaller on, on these. These are prototypes right here. So this 
is uh, I'm calling it the Raptor, which is kind of a fun little, it's got, it's almost like a Hawkbill tip. Yeah. So I used to have a Hawkbill series. And so this is kind of a modification of that. And so it's small enough where you get a three finger grip, uh -huh. but it's still plenty of, there it is. Yeah. So it's it, just, a, it's kind of a fun little, you know, little flipper that we'll see. I don't know. I hope people like it, but I'm working on it now and that'll come out in about a month or two. Yeah. It totally, wait, 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 before you put it away, um, put it, uh, put the blade up real close so we can see the grind. Um, yeah, this thing really caught my eye when I was, uh, on your website. It is really interesting. I love, um, I love these kind of combo blades, you know, and usually yeah. you see that Hawkbill, uh, if it's got two different edges like that, you'll see the Hawkbill closer to the tang and then you'll see the straight up front. I like how you reversed it. Yes. And then uh, let's the see. guys at Shredder oh, said, the guys yeah. at Shredder say, Hey, Carrie, will you be at blade show West? Yes, absolutely. So their, awesome. their work, I, uh, I got an email from them. So they're going to be, sending out all the info and, and the booth numbers and all that. So we'll post all that, but yes, absolutely. So we're really excited to be there. That's going to be awesome. And uh, Yuri says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, to, um, but, but Yuri says that the Grizzly looks like a modern day um, Hudson Bay knife. You know, the, the big, it was like a uh, kind of a clip point trapper, kind of a broad bladed, do everything right. uh knife from the early early days of the new world basically um, I like it. yeah and and he's right that that that's that's the perfect uh kind of nice. anal analog so what what is this that you have up here and so right? another proto another prototype is oh. it's a, a cleaver style and so cool so it's almost got the grippiness i i think i'm gonna uh smooth out the grip a little bit so it's a uh, closer to a four finger grip and so it's a little cleaver thing i know there was a cleaver uh fad that went on and i've always loved the cleaver i just i'm a sucker for it so i decided to make one a little more tactical ish and uh yeah we'll see it's a prototype again i'll throw it out there and see what happens well, something that I like that you've done with this um, is uh, one of the, one of the sort of weak points of a cleaver is the point for penetration, but you've added a swedge on there, so that that will really aid in using yes. that tip. Yes, I, I like. And that. then I'm going to make the make the choil bigger, so the choil will be a little more friendly uh, for your front finger. Sticking your finger in there. Yeah. <laughs> so this the hoglet, man, I love yes. the hoglet. This there it is, is a like, very cleave, cleaver style, right? Yes, yes, and I love the I love the whole the style. It's like in the style of a cleaver to put that hole there. I, I really like nice. that. But uh, this this is one that I've been admiring on your website for a long time. I'm a I'm a big time uh, EDC fixed blade carrier. Like I'd love to be able to carry this all the time, but right. uh, my lifestyle and doesn't permit it. But this right. you know is easily stashed and man exactly. i love it it feels great in hand it's very very ergonomically pleasing and nice. uh yeah man I, I really dig this knife what was the last yeah. thing that you had up there from shredder uh we just got the new g10 handle hoglet very comfortable yeah yeah exactly these guys man they oh, are yeah. huge fans of your of your work that's awesome yeah thank you I. appreciate that that's amazing well, you, these designs are really, really cool and, uh, not for nothing, but you have awesome action happening on the folders, you know, yeah, this, so this we've been, I've fault. been working with, uh, best tech mostly. So they, they make such good action and I really like them personally. And, uh, so I've, I've moved a lot of my designs over to them. Yeah. I mean, they just you know, just falling shut. And then, um, the, uh, the rapid fire coyote that we gave away tonight, uh, yeah. was donated by our good friend, Dave. Uh, yeah. that thing fires out like crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if you heard uh nice stuff says Yuri Testikoff. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you because I like them. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I was saying that the rapid fire comes out with the strength that shakes 
the the anything yeah. that that isn't tight on your body it shakes yeah. that and you're like oh yeah, yeah i guess i have to work out <laughs> yeah yeah you just flip that a few times and your forearms look like popeye yeah <laughs> exactly but somehow actually it's easy to put away one-handed so it's true yeah you know. yeah yeah that's i mean the name i think works for it rapid yeah. fire so yeah um i wanted to show you this i had you know a lot of people do um the Cerakote oh, cool. and stuff. So I've been working with a company and we've been tinkering with some designs. So I took the alpha dog and we're coming up with just like a limited edition alpha dog with a Cerakote on it. We Cerakoted everything. It goes all the way through the uh, entire oh, tank. Cool. And uh, this one is the Patriot. And, cool. and then like a camo version, I got another one. So I'm kind of, we're just, I'm just playing with it, but it's, uh, I think it looks cool. I think it looks really cool. I like that, uh, Patriot model, especially that is, that is really cool. And yeah. you know what? Sarah coating the blade like that really, um, highlights, uh, the, the, um, unique profile of the ov overall shape of the blade. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there because it's, I've been working on it forever, but <laughs> nice. So. Uh, Jonathan and Ezekiel say, whoa, dang it. Just take our money. <laughs> you guys don't, are the best. Don't tell mama shredder. <laughs> yeah. She'll find out. She'll find out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mama shredder. So awesome. Well, I think they, that's tacit permission right there. <laughs> nice. Cool, man. Well, I think you're doing, I think you're doing awesome work. And, uh, I, I really, uh, this, this, I'm really excited to, to, um, rely on, you know, for a week, this will be, this will be the knife that I rely on to. Yeah. I want to hear a report. I want to hear a report. I will. And, and, uh, Jim, our producer here, Jim is like, oh yeah, you got to make videos of that. So I'll, I'll make some videos, you yeah. know, prepping. And unfortunately cool. there's no smell of vision, so you won't get to, you know, enjoy what I make with this, but, <laughs> right. but, but seriously, this is, this is definitely a kitchen camp knife, but you could use this for, it seems like you could really go to town with this. Yeah. That's kind of the, the whole overall broadness of it is to make it overbuilt and make it feel like a, a normal uh, fixed blade that you would take in the woods, yeah. but super slicey, you know, for cooking purposes and all that. So, right. Anyway, so, I just want to pop on. I don't want to take all your time and uh, dig the show. And awesome. I appreciate you showing off my stuff. And I, and I love reading the comments of everybody. It's really cool. Uh, well, thank you, sir. Thanks for coming on. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Anytime you want to come on, show us what you're working on. We'd love to see it. Awesome. All right. Thank all right, you. Carrie. Thank you, everybody. All right. See that's ya. Carrie of Off Grid Knives. Thank you, sir. There he goes. Carrie of Off Grid Knives, man. I, I just... So happy, so glad to have been have have met. What am I trying to say? I'm so happy to have met him and others like him doing all this interesting work, making these really awesome knives. Uh, <laughs> Dave says, "Damn, he's got me out on Amazon now at the Off Grid store." Uh, yeah, Dave, you shouldn't have donated the the rapid fire. You might have to just go rebuy it. Um, Anyway, uh, the, it's it's that chef's knife, and then this came in. This was all day long at work, just like nothing. You know, what's that sound? Nothing. Just mind your own beeswax. I probably need one of those, says Kiefer. I think so. I think you do need one of those. Uh, I think that this will be a... Um, I'm not going to leave it in my car because I don't want it to get uh, my car got broken into like, I don't know, five years ago and they took a recon one. So I've, I've learned my lesson and I only keep uh, knives. I don't care too much about in the car, but this will be a, maybe this goes in my backpack because my backpack is always with me in the car and ah, Brent stepping out again. I need to get me one of those off grids. Yes, you do, sir. I think you dig them. I think you dig them. You love the overbuilt knives and, and uh, yeah, I think you, I think you'd be into this. Let me show you another, another cool knife that um, I got, you know, over the past, well, it came in this past week and I ordered it uh, several months back after I spoke with this young man, John Miller of BGM knives. 
excuse me, maker of a hand maker of really nice, um, really nice uh, EDC fixed blades. And he's got a wide variety. Some of them aren't so EDCable, and uh, others are. He's got a, like I said, a, a catalog of his own designs. And then he's he has maybe a couple of designs that he's worked on with customers uh, that have have worked their way into his catalog. And then he also just does custom stuff. But I got his uh, Quaken, and uh, I it was one of his first knives, and I absolutely love it. He does. He, he, he will use a variety of high carbon and stainless steels. He will do a chisel grind or a double bevel. He will do a flat grind or a hollow grind. This guy, I was about to call him a kid. I'm sorry. Everyone who's younger than 49 at this point is a kid to me. Uh, but this, this young, this gentleman uh, can really grind the hell out of a knife. And uh, he also does cord wrapping and, you know, G10 and, um, um, micarta lately as you may know i'm in this cord wrapping phase so i asked him to make me this with the purple and the green because uh, i saw him make one like this for someone else and i was like i love that color combination i'm a big fan of purple and i like it set off with that green uh but uh never you worry this this is uh made stiff with some sort of a um, acrylic or something um on their epoxy or something. So this is, this, uh, is very hard. And look at this blade. This is three V steel. And look at how hollow ground this is. Look at how thinly ground this is. I'm not sure if you can quite tell, but it is really nicely hollow ground. And, uh, man, I just love this thing. And it's got a, a very deep sharpening notch there. So you could really, um, use this for a lifetime and sharpen and sharpen and sharpen all the way up to there. And you'd still have a very thin behind the edge uh, blade, you know, cutting edge here. So that uh, this is just a really, that is a proper choil. Indeed it is. Uh, I really like this. It sits in my uh, waistband at three o'clock. I'll show you. This is a, um, it's about a three and three quarters inch blade. And uh, man, that's awesome. So uh, you should check him out, BGM Knives on Instagram. Uh, he's there. Here's his maker's mark, BGM Knives. And it's very interesting for the uh, amount of options you can get with the steels, with the grind types, with the handle types. Um, it's very worth it. I mean, he's like... I, like, I feel like he should be charging more or soon will be charging more uh, than he does. You'll be surprised by uh, by what you can get for your money from from this guy. Uh, so definitely check him out. He was uh, on the podcast. And I'm sorry, Jim, I forgot to grab the episode number. I, 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 I forget to do that. But he was recently on the podcast. So check him out. BGM Knives. And that's Michael Miller. Chris says, going to get the Raptor and the Cayman when they come out. Oh, the Cayman. You will love this, Chris, because uh, because of your your Bowie fixation. It's very, oh, so cool. Love this thing. Great action on it, too. So uh, any ideas, people? Why are things trending smaller? Is it just because uh, when the tactical style knife came out, and I'm using that term loosely, you know, this sort of modern locking, folding, flipping knife came out. It started out big because it was thought of as a tactical, you know, weapon tool kind of thing. And is it shrinking just because most people realize they're not using them for that purpose? And, um, or, or has it always been a need that just wasn't being fulfilled? Um, I don't know. I I'm curious about that because, uh, well, you know, I like, I like the big knives and seems, seems like more things like, uh, I see a lot of designs that I go crazy over and then I'm like, ah, oh, but it's only, like three and a quarter inches. Have you discovered SG knives on IG yet? No relation. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, oh uh, now I'm going to go into detail on, on this next one um, on uh, Wednesday's supplemental show, but I just, it came in. I just have to show it. Hey, Ashton, how's it going, sir? The smaller knife thing is due to more efficient material use. Interesting. I liked your, uh, I liked your video yesterday. You had your five, like five 
top top notch knives and uh oh man that seeing that koenig just mm, just made me made me want the koenig even more than i kind of already do i've been resisting it uh and now i don't know i feel a pull uh steven says let's be really honest we really don't need an oversized tool i do i do i am being honest sir <laughs> well okay what i mean by that actually is that uh you know mostly i i could you know i could get along with just the fitch uh, the Finch, Runtley, I'm sorry, with everything that I need. More urban friendly, that is true. Legality is a big part of it. A lot of people like to follow their local laws. Um, this I could get away with for almost all my cutting chores, except maybe the bagel or the, the errant uh, sandwich or something that I have to cut that's big or whatever. Uh, but but really, it's it's uh, it's a taste and a, um, you know, it's a taste thing, Patty. I, I feel like... Uh, you know, like if I'm going to carry around something that I don't need, like this is this is even overkill for me. Well, I may as well go like overkill. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of how I feel. The preference has always been on the three inch or less, primarily because of work. Interesting. Because you got to pull it out and use it and you don't want to all constantly be dealing with, oh, my God, that's so. Nick Alvarez. Good to have you here, Nick and Nicholas. Sorry, I don't mean to be presumptuous. Uh, I'm with you on the big knives. All you need is one time in your life to be in a situation when you wish you had a bigger knife. Thank you. And it's like Lynn Thompson is fond of saying, you can do small jobs with a big knife. You can't do big jobs with a small knife. See, he has a, a really refined sense of justification that I can really, that really resonates with me. Steve says, more people get into knives plus more people getting into knives plus more people working in offices equals smaller knives smaller knife selections. Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably right. I think it probably does not have to do with the skinny jeans because let's face it, most skinny jean wearers don't carry knives. No, I'm just I'm just casting aspersions here left and right. Greg Ortiz, good to have you here, sir. Some look a lot cooler. I agree. Some knives need it's like the um uh the um XM24 Warncliffe or Bowie versus the XM18 Warncliffe or Bowie. You need that extra space, the, the extra length to really truly express the beauty of that design. I believe that honestly. It's also like some cars are like that. Some cars, some sports cars look just a little stubby, you know, and it's like if you just kind of lengthened it, maybe put some more cylinders under the hood and required it to be longer, uh, you know, it'd be better. It's like that little convertible um, uh, BMW, the Z something, uh, I always thought it was a good looking car if you just sort of stretched it out a little bit. Shredders, uh, the guys at Shredder say everything comes in waves. Right now it's small folders. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Trends abide. Ash says, I can't say too that small knives are so cute. Maybe that's a thing. It is a thing. Tell me this is not a cute knife. Tell me. And I won't believe that you mean it. I think it is a cute knife. I also think... Uh, like this small version of it. Well, the the three inch, the Synapse is kind of a cute knife. It's also handsome and it's also fierce and super cool and all that. But it's also kind of cute because it's so it's so we. Wait, we have local laws? <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing that. I don't know what it, exactly what they mean by that. But yeah, apparently. So here's a um, here's a guy uh, that I discovered. I didn't discover him. Tier one. Uh, sent me a couple of his knives to check out. But Patty, I do have a four finger grip available and a sub four inch handle won't do. Wait, I'm sorry. Sometimes I can't read. But Patty, I need to have a four finger grip available and a sub four inch handle won't do. I I, I, I see what you're getting at there. Because then you're trying to like grasp onto and, and it becomes a three finger grip. Uh, working in retail, my knives have to be smaller so I don't scare customers. Yeah, I was at um, I was at Home Depot once trying to buy rope, like thick rope. And this poor guy, he had this dull um, utility mat knife, and he was like trying to cut through this thing. And I'm like, you know, may I, you know? And I pull out my, uh, it was an Emerson Horseman, which I no longer have, gave to a, or sold to a friend of mine at work. 
And he's like, sure, go ahead. You know, like save me some time. I just <laughs> cut through it. And I'm like, why do they, you know, you work in a damn like super hardware store. Why do they make you carry that around? So we don't scare customers. I'm like, you're not going to scare the customers here. They walk around with hammers and nail guns all the time. Like, come on. They sell more. Yep. I believe that. Oh, per box. That's an interesting way of looking at it too. Economics. Like they do sell more probably. And baby hands and political correctness. <laughs> Pearl clutching. Yes, I think you're right. Baby hands. And, uh, but yeah, they probably sell more three inch knives because most people don't actually need the big ones and they can pack more in boxes. Deacon, I have a smaller counterpart to a bigger knife from the same maker. Can be interesting for personal comparison's sake. I agree 100%. I agree 100% with that. Um, like the, you know, I keep coming back to Emerson's, but, but the, uh, the, the mini Emerson's are cool. I mean, they're, they're just as fat as the as the big ones, but they're just cool to have. <laughs> um, buy bigger jeans. Yeah, that's what I need to do anyway. Uh, so let me just show you this knife real quick, and I'm not going to go into great detail because I'm going to I'm going to do that in the Wednesday supplemental podcast. Uh, but this beautiful thing I had made by a gentleman named Ron Ron Steele Jr. and he goes by Ron Steele Design and. I did a little quick two-minute unboxing video of this today. It, it actually technically wasn't an unboxing. I already took it out of the box, but he had it presented in brown in brown paper wrapped in, in uh, jute twine. And it just looks so old school and awesome that I had my daughter turn on the, the camera and I, I just videotaped pulling it out of that. But look at this thing. So uh, as I said, tier one uh, exposed me to this guy. And uh, I had to get uh, one him to make me one of his knives. He's only been doing this about a year, Ron Steele. And uh, this is his Prime model, which I think has a very beautiful and unique uh, blade profile. And it was just crying to be, uh, to be made as a double-edged. So I asked if he would make me one double-edged. He hadn't done it yet on this model. And so he obliged. And it was a... It was a challenge and he met it and he, you know, he said like, took him a minute to figure out how to do it, but he did an absolutely beautiful job. This is 80 CRV. That's a deep acid etch on the uh, bevels there. There's his maker's mark. And I asked for um, maroon linen micarta. He obliged, but he did something interesting with it. You know, instead of, I was just thinking, slabs of micarta and I'm done. And he, he made these beautiful uh, sectioned slabs with black and gray G10. So this is double lined and just a beautiful, beautiful knife. I'm really excited to carry this. I need to get an ulti clip or, or something for this. Uh, I'll probably swap it out with something that I already have until I get something new. But look at the color of those handles. Just beautiful. And incidentally, it happens to be my high school colors, and I'm not a big rah-rah, uh, you know, those were the days kind of guy. But I always like the combination of maroon and black. So uh, it's a nice little coinky dink. I wasn't, maybe it was just a Freudian slip to ask for black and, and maroon, but I love the combination and this knife, man. Uh, check out Ron Steel Design. He does a lot of... Um, on Instagram, he does a number of knives that are even more EDCable, fixed blades that are smaller. He, I've seen a lot of his knives with, um, with uh, GL Hansen and Sons, uh, G Carta, you know, beautiful, um, different little little tantos and little uh, little worn cliff sheep's foot blades with with that Mexican blanket G Carta. Man, he he makes some really good stuff, and he's a uh, uh, a graphic designer by trade. So the man's got a good eye and I think his designs are gorgeous. And uh, tier one asked him to make a, this is the prime model. Tier one asked him to make him a prime in uh, Bowie, a, a Bowie prime. And he, he did it. And now he's made a couple of them and man, his Bowie shape is gorgeous. Really, really nice. So I'm going to have to do that next and ask him if he can double edge it. Uh, Jim, what was that last comment? Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I'm sorry, sir. I'm gonna. It's gonna take me a second. Is that like Aoxamoxoa? 
NYC, Oxy Moxy, uh, uh, like the Grateful Dead album, Aoxo Moxo uh, NYC. Anyway, man, great to have you here, sir. Great channel, Bob. Thank you. Uh, most tasks today are handled by knives with great ergonomics and a non-threatening look. Yep. We love our big ones, but smaller ones, just easier to handle modern life. Yes. And, and I'm also thinking, um, a Oxamoxo NYC. I'm also thinking that, uh, that might also be what led to, the recent resurgence in popularity with traditional style slip joints. Um, Mike Latham might have something to say about that. Um, but I love that because it's, it's not only, um, they're not only very friendly to those around you, but they also have a, an inherent nostalgia to them that is just undeniable. And, uh, and, and they're mostly small, smaller knives and, and really honestly, you know, on a daily basis, I usually carry about three knives. And when I do have to use one, almost always it's the smallest one I have on me. Uh, unless, like I said, I'm cutting that proverbial bagel. NG, good to have you here. My knife doubles as a boat anchor if I need it to. What do you carry, a 110? Uh, let's see, Poncho. Poncho 151, I think this is the first we're hearing from you this week. Great to see you here, sir. To quote the great Gundy, Dundee, that's not a knife, that's a knife. I'd rather have it and not need it. Agreed. Plus, you can shave with it if need be, like he did, if it's sharp enough. Steve says, uh, my cute knife is the three and a half real steel G slip. <laughs> yeah, three and a half inch. But if it's a slip joint, three and a half inch refers to its closed length. And that's about a boy's knife, right? Having a smaller counterpart to a bigger knife from the same maker can be interesting, even if it's just for personal comparison's sake. Uh, you repeat yourself, Deacon. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I agree with that. I or. I or. I or. Good to have you here, presumably, sir. You need both big and small knives on your person at all times. Agreed. Uh, that is why they make the, the small pocket right here. It's for, a, it's for a knife. Or the back left pocket. You know, the back left pocket is for a bandana and a knife, period. Because who carries their wallet? in their back left pocket. Who among us? I don't think anybody. Another NAF guy, Ashton. I do think, though, that the smaller style is a fad in the same vein as the huge overbuilt knives. It just goes in cycles based on who's who's in office, I think, subconsciously. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, that could be. That could be. I guess I'm in office all the time in my own mind because it... I've always been into these big ones. Uh, you, sir, uh, mentioned that uh, that uh, Tuya knife, Tanto. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep coming back to that video you did, but that Tuya knife, Tanto, was a shock to me. I was like, I kind of forgot about them as a brand. You know, they they came on hot and heavy with the was it the Bruiser? Um, it was like a clip point blade, I think. And then didn't hear much from them, um, but very interesting knife that that uh, tanto whoa that knife is gorgeous oh yeah thank you thank you like i made it uh but i did order it and pay for it so and and uh and uh, that thing is beautiful thank you i agree look at those handles i mean this dot guy does great work uh for any length of time but he's only been doing this for <clears throat> one year i love this right here i mean just very refined um are they ground differently I'm not sure which one you're you're talking about now because I've been talking about a lot of these. So clarify. Um, but what I was going to say is this this is another guy that uh, if you like this knife, you should contact him. Ron Steele Jr. His, as he is somewhat new to the knife making uh, uh, field, his prices are very reasonable and uh, and it's a you know it's a great way great thing to do is get on the ground floor of someone. Uh, someone's knife career and, and get stuff, you know, and, and then, and then later on either, either their knives go up in price and what you have that early version becomes more valuable if selling it is your thing, 
or they disappear into obscurity. And then you have this awesome relic of someone who's gone. And I hate to put it that way. I don't think Ron Steele is going to do that. I mean, he, he seems to be headed upward just like, uh, just like John, uh, Miller here, but, uh, it's something to think about. There's another guy that, who I will be reaching out to next. I'm, I'm kind of getting into custom knives, custom, you know, EDC fixed blade knives. And, uh, so there's like a, there's someone else. I'm not going to name him yet, but I'm going to reach out to him too. Uh, Rockstar, Rocksoft. Uh, good to have you here. I think this is your first comment to me. I just got my Doug Ritter RSK and totally love it. Wouldn't even look at the mini. That's interesting. He, uh, I love this mini. I, I have the, I had the RSK Mark one, the big one, and I ended up selling it to someone who really, really wanted and needed it. And it, you know, I can get another one, but this, this one, um, uh, Mr. Ritter sent to me and it means a lot. So I'm, I'll never get rid of this one. Plus it's got that purple, cool purple G Carta. So, so rocks off. That's my long way of saying, and I, I'm not named name dropping cause he was just on the show here, but, uh, that's my long way of saying, this is definitely a good one to get in the smaller version because unlike the, um, bench made versions of this basically this same knife it doesn't have the shorter you know that griptilian the mini griptilian just like was almost like a three finger knife or or a, a three and a half finger knife this gives you a full grip but it doesn't have a jacked up blade to handle ratio you know it looks good it looks even and uh also the handle is just a titch longer just just making that difference so I don't know. Something to consider. K. Mason. Wait, I thought I heard that skinny jeans were fading out of style. I hope that is so. I, I think I heard that too. But uh, as I'm fond of saying, I'm, I'm always late to the party. And I never I never got in on the skinny jeans. You know, uh, they say that, that people kind of lock into the style that they were kind of into in their 20s and, uh, and then tend not to vary too much into the trends. And I've always considered uh, myself classic. You know, I like the classics. Jeans, you know, uh, jeans are jeans and definitely not skinny jeans. I don't like the way it looks uh, on my body, you know. Uh, Scott N., I thought you were going to say blood and steel were your school. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Blood and steel. I like that. I'm going to say that from now on. And I probably won't credit you, so sorry. <laughs> Uh, Shane says, I was recently threatened by a psycho with a knife. Jeez, man. I didn't even bother to take out my Pilar. Never again. Wow, man. Uh, that's shocking. And I'm sorry to hear that you experienced that. That's bullshit, man. No one should ever pull a knife on anyone. Especially, well, I guess the guy was a psycho and didn't, didn't know the difference. But man, I'm sorry to hear that, Shane. And I'm kind of sorry to hear you were carrying a Pilar. I mean, maybe the Pilar 3 in a pinch, but regular pilar you can't even but not that you know that's not even a realistic thought so i'm sorry that happened to you sir uh but you know maybe maybe an emerson or something you can wave out would be appropriate bald man knife and tool does amazing work with fixed blades too tapered tang and some amazing finishing check him out yeah i was just talking about him before um when we were reading off the um the patron, my patrons. And he was my very first patron. Brent Smith is his name and man alive. So I met him for the first time at blade show and he comes up and I'm like, I see he's carrying a fixed blade knife. And I'm like, Oh, what are you carrying? He's like, Oh, it's a knife I made. Oh, let me check it out. He pulls it out. I'm like, damn, it was a beautiful, um, uh, uh, Damascus. I think he got it from Alabama Damascus works. Beautiful Damascus blade, very thin, um, utility style knife, four inch blade, four inch handle, like nice paper micarta kind of looked, uh, like Westinghouse. I mean, it wasn't, but, but it kind of had that, uh, evoked that thing. Uh, I didn't notice the tang, but taper tang. That's so cool. Yeah. He's doing great work, man. I, I really want to get one of those knives. Surprise, surprise. Jan, I think skinny jeans make people look silly, but I live in the glass house of the mid-90s oversized pants. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. <laughs> I got my uh so I'm 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 late 80s. I think I'm locked in the in the in the late 80s. 
So, so boot cut for me, baby. Uh, Chris says, got the mini Crooked River only because it was at a great price. It has a screaming sharp mirror edge by the seller. Would much prefer the full size Crooked River. Full size Crooked R River was a nice knife. I, I sold mine to get something else. That's one of those things I kind of wish I still had. Had it in the wood handle. That's also a knife I kind of wish they offered in a different handle set than just the the wood or just the um, the gray G10. It was kind of a weird that G10 iteration was a little weird, but that the the, um, the mini version is still a three point four three and a half inch blade. That's still a pretty nice size. Hey Alex, good to see you here, sir. Just wanted to stop in and say hello. Great to see you, sir. Hang on before you leave. If you're dipping out, let me show you this. Very cool custom knife I got from uh, Ron Steele. Ron Steele Design on, on Instagram. He made it double-edged for me. And uh, beautiful maroon handles. Everyone who's been here is like, yes, yes, I know you've been talking about it. But I figured Alex would appreciate it because he is an appreciator of fine knives. The Envy, yeah, man, it's super nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you too could have one. Uh, so Mike Latham says, on traditionals, I don't see a trend smaller. Seems like three and a half to three and three quarters that's closed is general size with a few sitting over and under. More people do pack their jeans like my wife's purse. <laughs> so real estate is precious. That's true. And that is true. And if you have an urban lifestyle, like when I lived in, in New York, you know, I didn't have a car and uh, I rode the subway everywhere. So you either have a bag or you probably have a bag, but you also have stuff in your pockets because you don't keep pulling stuff out of your bag. So, yeah, your pockets are at a premium. You know, the space in your pockets is, a, is at a premium. Hero Stick says, I'm still blown away by Stark Creations, actually selling off a couple of pieces to try and grab one of those. Oh, cool. Yeah, he was he was the uh, he is the guest this week. Uh, on the Knife Junkie podcast, and his stuff is awesome. I mean, his his work is just impeccable. He's like one of those people that you see, and you're like, okay, this person has an obvious talent for making knives, and just you know, obvious talent. Ezekiel is designing his first custom knife, a fixed blade chopper. Oh, sweet! I know you're shocked. The Kukri House is making it. Oh, dude! Oh, that's so awesome. That is awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait to see that. See, man, what a little go-getter he is. My God, he's got a successful YouTube channel with a little help, I know, but still. And now he's designing a knife and having someone make it. That's awesome, man. Kudos to him. He, he'll be the next, uh, you know, Sal Glesser or Rick Hinderer. Very nicely done. Uh, he's a cool dude. Met him at blade super awesome knives yeah he is a he is a nice guy and and that knife looks like uh the knife that he was carrying i don't know if it's the same one you saw um just a jack of all trades and uh, you could you could use it for just about anything uh you know cutting a steak uh just utility stuff knife fighting definitely uh gentlemen work comes early i'm off to bed we'll be dreaming of sharp knives Kiefer, thank you so much for joining us sir Always a pleasure, and uh, thanks for commenting. Shane, I just kept imagining what a knife uh, was going to look like in a small office, what a knife fight was going to look like in a small office. Woo, man, it's uh, ugly. You know, uh, they say the guy who wins the knife fight is the guy who dies last. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, Poncho151. If I'm not mistaken, the Crooked River is the benchmate is in the be uh, benchmade custom shop. Yes, I I definitely know it. It is actually. Yeah, that that knife is uh, just a classic. It looks like a classic anyway. Uh, classic shape, clip point blade that you could really, you know, it looks good with the bolsters and the wood. And uh, you, but you could do anything with that. I almost bought a Crooked River from Duluth Trading Company online for 99 bucks, but I did research when I got back. It was gone. Excuse me. That sucks. I hate when that happens, man. I hate when that happens. And uh, it, it happens easily. It, it can really happen easily. Um, I, it happened to me at the Les George booth 
at uh, at Blade Show. I should have I should have known. It was just so stupid of me. He had these three awesome daggers out, EDC size, like perfect for the size I like to carry. I'm like, I'll come back. Dude, they were gone like moments later, no doubt. I was there at the right time in the right place. I should have just laid down the credit card and gotten it then. But who knows? I might be answering it for it right now with my, I might be broadcasting from the doghouse tonight. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe everything happens for a reason. It was a closeout. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So uh, I think, well, before I go on to the knife fight, which obviously will be me against me, um, I just want to bring up one quick thing. This was the folding knife of the year or uh, knife of the year at Blade Show. And, and it's a little confusing as to why, but it's neat. It's innovative. And it's actually a folding dagger that is a true dagger with both edge edges sharpened. I'm talking about the Fox Knives Saturn. Saturn, the great Roman god. Uh, this is uh, uses the radius lock. And uh, that's, that's like this innovation uh, from Fox. And I put it in quotes. I, I don't know. It, it, and it was originally on the radius knife. Look at that, though. It's pretty damn nice looking knife. Uh, but the lock and the opening mechanism is on the other side. And it's a little stud that uh, follows in a track. And you just sort of push it in the track and it opens and then it locks. And then to close it, there it is. To close it, you depress the stud and that unlocks it. And you just bring it in by following back in the track. I'm sure it works great. I'm sure it works great or it wouldn't have gotten knife of the year. Um, but uh, for some reason, it, it gives me bad memories of that Camillus or Camillus, however you pronounce it. That one that had the uh, the the arc shaped track in the handle and you push the thing up and down in the arc and it's supposed to cam the blade out and uh, and you're supposed to do it in reverse and it's supposed to work. And my experience with that knife, I thought it was really cool when I, first got it and it looked just like a Terzuola. I'm not sure if it was a Terzuola ripoff or if that was actually a, a, a profile licensed by, um, by Camillus from or Camillus from Bob Terzuola. But I was excited about it because I love the look of it. And then that, that, that mechanism just, ah, God, it was so constraining and it barely worked on the, at least on the model that I had. So I see that little track Looks like a knife out of Tron. I see that little track in the, what is it called? The um, radius lock. And it feels like it's going to be hemming you in a little bit. I, I mean, I like the option of just kind of, uh, just kind of flicking your thumb kind of in any direction, as long as it's, uh, you know, in, in these 180 degrees, kind of any direction you flick your thumb, you're going to get deployment. Uh, with a regular thumb stud. With that one, it seems like you have to be very deliberate and very precise in how you open it. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not true at all. Maybe I just have to get my hands on it. It is sub three inches. Uh, but since it's double-edged, uh, I'm willing to forgive its diminutive size. And uh, it seems like it'd be a really cool thing to check out and try. It looks cool, uh, but I don't know. Looks like it would fail after getting a little dirty. Yeah, something about it. It looks finicky to me. It looks finicky. It looks high maintenance or something. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I just have a fear of the new. We fear change. Just kidding. We don't. We don't. We live for change because change is the only constant. Poncho 151 says, snagged a GEC number 83 lockback in Bocote. Nice. From Knives Ship Free today on a whim with no research and it's my first GEC. I told myself I'm going to it's going to be the only one. No, it's not. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I am set am I setting myself up to fail? Yes, you are cuz you know what you're going to get that. You're going to be like, well, it's a lockback and and not for nothing. I have heard that a lot of GEC lockbacks have a little bit of play, but that's fine. I, I think you see that in some traditional lockbacks, but you're going to say but they're not really known for their lockbacks. They're really known for their slip joints. So maybe I should just get a, a GEC slip joint too, just so I know, you know what the real GEC experience is or the most common GEC experience is, and so I can contrast and compare 
between the locking version and the, and so you'll do that and you'll get something else. And then you'll be like, Oh, these slip joints are awesome. I see. And then you'll start going down that hole, that rabbit hole. So yeah, that, that is what will happen. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Um, best of luck, sir. Best of luck with that bank account. <laughs> All right. Let's get to this knife fight. Can you buy? Wait, wait. Uh, I'm sorry, but can you button with it? Oh, baton with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. With a metal pipe, if you don't like that back edge. <laughs> yeah, that's how it would work. Uh, you And it would have to be inch thick wood. It would have to be very, very thin wood. So uh, tonight's knife fight is expensive foreign versus cheap domestic. Wasn't sure if I was going to have to do this against myself, and and it looks like I am, and that's all good because I got to get some sleep. Oh, lowercase Bob versus uppercase Bob. All right, all right. So expensive foreign. I'm going to start with expensive foreign. In three, two, one. Okay. Oh, terrible way to start. Let me let me start again. Uh, let me start with cheap domestic first. I'm going to start with cheap domestic first. You know, we live in a country that could really stand to bring some industry back home. We live in a country that has uh, opened its borders to industry in such a way that uh, we've lost a lot of jobs. We've lost a lot of manufacturing capability. And actually, that's such an important thing because when the chips are down and you have to rely on yourself to keep things going, you have to know how to create these things. Knives, obviously, are one of the most important things, period, in, in, the, in terms of thingness. So you have to be able to know how to um, uh, create a knife. Now, whether it is an expensive, fancy, uh, prestige knife or not, you need to know how to manufacture knives. So I say that as long as you keep the manufacturing of knives in the in the states, um, it does not matter whether it's cheap or expensive. Oh, really, what you want to do is you want to know that you can actually do it. If you're making cheap domestic knives and and using cheap domestic knives, that is fine. You can always scale up in terms of materials, in terms of uh, time, energy, and attention in the manufacture uh, and engineering. Um, but if you've lost the ability altogether to make knives, it doesn't matter. It's a moot point if it's cheap or expensive domestic. You just need to know how to make the knives right here. So how'd you like that? I brought my voice down. I did that. I did that thing that they do. Um, and I hope that that helped convince you. Uh, now for expensive foreign. I say you get what you pay for. And quite often, you don't get much when you don't spend a lot. So why should you have to spend a lot on a foreign knife? Well, you, you don't have to. Time has proven that. You could go cheap foreign, and there's nothing worse than cheap foreign. There's actually no excuse for cheap foreign when you could go cheap domestic. But let's talk expensive foreign for a second. There are things that we call expensive coming from other countries that if they were made here would be off the charts, not even expensive. That's not the right word. It would be way expensive. So the reason you want to get something expensive and foreign is that your money will take you oh so much further. You might be spending a good amount there for this foreign knife, but... Um, what you get for that amount of money is going to be a lot more than if you're spending that same amount of money here domestically. And, uh, you know, there's a, a laundry list of Asian, com Asian companies in uh, adversarial nations that are making, that are making knives that are just, uh, you know, blowing us away for how much they cost. And, uh, if you want to get the, the most value for your dollar, it makes more sense to spend as much as you can for the best that you can than to fritter away your money 
uh, on multiple models that none of which live up to their thing. Okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. It's it's not as rewarding debating yourself, especially on a topic that you haven't really thought through very well. Uh, but but that's basically what I was thinking. We'll always support America, <laughs> LOL. But not but nothing wrong with foreign high quality. Here here, uh, here here. Um, I I think I need more Italian knives in my life. K Mason says, are you talking about the likes of Shiro? Yeah, sure, sure. Actually, I was talking about the like the likes of. Um, yes, I am. Uh, but I was also talking about the Chinese high end knives. And uh, I thought it would be interesting fodder for some of the people who who come on this show. But since I was the only one doing it, I didn't really think it through very well. But I, I, I guess I do mean that on both ends of things, um, for both arguments. You know, you cannot lose the um, the ability to manufacture things for yourself. And if that means, you know, cheaper knives, then fine. Just as long as you know you can make them and you know you can scale them up. But also on the same side, that that idea of getting the most for your money and getting the best you can afford, well, that would lead you to expensive foreign knives. That was something my grandmother used to say. And you know what? I hate when people say that. My daddy used to say, or my mama used to say, I'm always like, no, she didn't. That's a lie. You're just saying that so that I'll believe you. Your mama didn't say that. Your mama said, clean your room, you know, uh, but uh expensive, you know, get, you get what you pay for and, and spend as much as you can to get the best you can. She said something like that. It was much more eloquent. I swear she did. I'm not just saying that. So you believe me. Poncho says, I always like to feel and enjoy a non-adversarial <laughs> made knife more. I agree, man. I agree. It feels good to have a non-adversarial knife in hand like this one. Totally non-adversarial. Buy good shoes and tools. Yes, sir. I, I would agree with you on that. I would agree with you on that. Good car helps too, man. Nothing worse than breaking down and being like, oh shit, that wasn't in my plan. I wasn't planning on breaking down on, well, I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to jinx myself. All right. As we wrap this up, Jim is reminding me to remind you, thank you, Jim, to check out the Ultimate Steel 2021. That's the Knife Rights uh, annual fundraiser. You heard Doug, if you were here earlier, you hear you you heard and saw Doug Ritter talking about that. And man, it's true. When I finally got to meet him at Blade Show, I kept coming to the to the booth to see if he was there, but he was out hobnobbing and uh he was hard to track down, even with the uh Hawaiian shirts they all wear uh at knife rights. But when I finally got him, we were talking and it was distracting because there was a, a a a big metal case between the two of us. And the table's kind of high, so the it was like right in my face with all of these amazing, gorgeous knives, real special production knives, and then custom knives that were donated by the manufacturers and by the makers for winners of the uh, ultimate ultimate steel and for donators of the ultimate steel. So, check it out. We donated last year. Excuse me. This year we're going to donate more. Um, and earlier because, uh, I want, I want to crack it at some of the, well, I want to crack at some of the nicer knives. Shane, great to have you here, sir. You have a great night and have a great week. Click the like button. Make sure it works. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Make sure that like button works, people. Click and of course, subscribe. Uh, if you've just happened upon us, make sure that you subscribe. Uh, check out the ultimate steel, help support knife rights so we can all carry knives and uh, and check out this coming's podcast, this coming week's podcast. Uh, Zach Wingard of Wingard Wearables making such cool tactical, or, you know, wearable weapons, really. Um, you want an ergonomic EDC tomahawk? He's your go-to guy, and they are awesome. I'm getting my second one. I have the Empress tomahawk, and I also have this quill here. Uh, but I'm getting my second, the Back Ripper Tomahawk. I'm on the July release of that. So I'll be getting that sometime in July. Looking forward to that. So check out the interview on uh, on Sunday. Check out the Wednesday supplemental show when I go in deep on this one and other stuff. And adios, Jan. Keep your powder dry. I love it. Good night, Chris. All right. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, John Evans, have a great night, sir. 
working his magic behind the switcher. And you guys, Ezekiel and Jonathan, have a great night. Ryan, great night. Ordered a quill from Wingard. Sweet. A little homemaker. Uh, great show, as always, and a good night to all. Thank you, Poncho. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>